Okay, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Soul Monade Show with Sonia, where all things are possible. You know, Auntie Donna, I love how you put it the other day when you were trying to describe the, the show to your friends. You said it's about improving your soul, mind, and body. I love it. Soul Monade stands for soul, mind, and body. We're all about being healthy, fit, and strong, physically, mentally, and spiritually. So I love the way that you put it. It's very simplistic. <laughs> so everybody, welcome to the show today. We have a great show with a very dear friend of mine, Clayton Holmes. He is a three-time Super Bowl champion with the Dallas Cowboys. He has had a very challenging um, uh, upbringing in the very beginning and then later on in, in his years playing in the league and you, uh, we're going to hear about what he is doing today. So stay tuned after the break as we bring Clayton Holmes onto the show via Skype. So I want to thank everybody for tuning in again today. This is our second show here on the air. Again, thank you to all of my viewers who have been so faithfully watching us on the internet for the last two and a half years. Welcome to watching us right here on TV and this show will soon be released on the internet for all else to see. We have a fantastic lineup that is coming up. We are going to cover some uh, very sensitive subjects, um, one being teen suicide. Um, it's an issue that I think is not talked about very much and I want to bring that to the foreground. I want to bring some specialists in and we're going to talk about some issues that are not necessarily brought up on a regular basis. We have uh, Rex Schultz is with us. He is a master mixologist and bartender downtown here at uh, Splash in Des Moines and award-winning I might add. Uh, he'll be on the show mixing up some fantastic holiday drinks. We have Dr. Jacobson, don't forget, is going to fix my rotator cuff. We are going to film this surgery. We're going to talk about sports medicine. He'll be on the show talking about that, so don't forget about that. And Wendy Griffith, news anchor from CBN, will be joining us. Dr. Valerie Scow of Heartland Chiropractic. And next week, we will have personal trainer and gym manager Marge Jones of Kosama Fitness will be right here in the studio answering your questions. So go ahead and get those questions submitted today. You can submit those uh, on Facebook and uh, of course you can also submit anything that you choose through the website. Hey, I also wanted to bring up the fact that, um, you know, Hurricane Sandy just struck two days ago at time of taping and I personally have many family members and friends that are right there in, in the Northeast. So our prayers are with you daily and I just want to encourage all of our viewers as you always do, please give back faithfully. I know Samaritan's Purse is on the ground doing their part. The American Red Cross has been on the ground doing their part. And World Vision. Those are some reputable organizations who are giving back. So let's all do our part. Lock arms and give back to make a difference. Enjoy the show. Fall is just around the corner. Make sure your furnace is up to the task. Have Thrasher Service check your furnace for only $82. Thrasher Service offers Geostar geothermal heating and cooling, which can save you money on your heating bill. So before the cold weather hits, call Thrasher Service, serving the Des Moines area since 1978. Let our family at Thrasher Service make your family comfortable year-round. Call us at 262-2229 or visit us online at thrasherservice.com. Sell things you no longer need for more money in your pocket. Why not take that old ring where cash is king? Sell things you no longer need for more money in your pocket. Hummus, fine to be. Hey, y'all, welcome back from the break. We have a dear friend that's joining us today, three-time Super Bowl champion Clayton Holmes is being Skyped in today from Wenatchee, Washington. Uh, Clayton has uh, been a guest on the show on several other occasions. We've uh, come together on uh, various charitable events as well. And uh, so without any further ado, I would like to introduce you to my friend Clayton Holmes. Clayton, welcome to the Soul Monade Show with Sonia. Thank you, Sonia. It's a pleasure being on your show as usual. Uh, I definitely love your company. I love what you stand for. And this is uh, an amazing opportunity, so thank you so much. Well, thank you very much, Clayton. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, we'll have to go ahead and get this sent off to you and uh, out on the internet after it airs on KDSM right here in Iowa on November the 11th. So uh, we'll make sure that you can get your hands on this via the internet, okay? Okay, that sounds great. <laughs> 
<laughs> and just a reminder too for our viewers after this airs here in Iowa every Sunday at 1030 in the morning it will go out on the internet so you can check us out on uh, Twitter or on Facebook or on uh, of course the Solmanad website solmanad.com so Clayton uh, three-time Super Bowl champion you played with the Dallas Cowboys from 1992 to 1997 yes Okay. Well, um, I want to take it back just a little bit further if we can. Let me see. So you were born in Florence, South Carolina. Is that correct? Yes. And then you went on and you attended a couple junior colleges, uh, North Greenville and uh, Carson Newman College in Tennessee. Yes. North Greenville was a junior college and Carson Newman was an NAIA college. Okay. Okay, and who are the key uh, influences in your life uh, in high school? Uh, the key influences in my life was a great man named Walter English, who was my high school coach and biology teacher. And, and mm -hmm. uh, he set everything in motion. If it wasn't for him, I definitely would not be here. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason that you say that is, is because you had um, some extreme uh, challenges. Uh, you grew up in a uh, community um, and in a family that um, was challenged financially and um, and things were a little bit more difficult in where you came up. Isn't that correct? Yes. And Coach English, he, he inspired me. There, there's nothing like being inspired. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't think I would be able to graduate from high school, let alone go to college. But he sat mm -hmm. me down one day, and he, he really motivated me. And if it wasn't for that speech, I probably would mm -hmm. not have graduated from high school, and I would not have gone on to college. So he set everything in motion again. Mm -hmm. And on the home front, you had um, several other challenges that you had to overcome. You weren't exactly being encouraged and, and having life spoken into you on a daily basis, were you? I'm sorry, could you repeat that uh, question, Sonia? Uh, you didn't exactly have life sp being spoken into you and being encouraged uh, on a daily basis at home, did you? I, I did not. And the first time it happened, I was 11 years old, mm -hmm. and it was one of the best feelings I've ever felt in my life. And Tell us I, about that. And that's why I played sports. Tell us about that. When you were 11 years old, what happened that day? I was the fastest cowboy on the team when I got there, but my career didn't start out like that. I was the last one picked. I was absolutely horrible at sports. And my friends convinced me to play baseball, and I would normally stand at the plate and strike out. I wouldn't swing the bat. One day I was <laughs> doing the exact same thing. The coach called a timeout and looked me in my eyes and said three simple words. and just said, swing the bat, Clayton. I stepped in the batter's box, and I did just that. I hit the baseball. My first hit was a triple. And for the first time, someone clapped for me, cheered for me. And someone patted me on the back with sincere um, meaning behind it. And it moved me. It transformed me. And that was the day that I became an athlete. And you said for the first time, at the, at the age of 11, this was the first time that somebody had clapped for you, patted you on the back, and, and encouraged you? Yes, the mm -hmm. very first time, and I will never, ever forget it. Uh, I struggled in school, so I wasn't doing well in school, and my home environment was frustrating for my, for my mom and all of us. So there wasn't a, a lot of love. And, you know, come sit on my lap, and here's a hug, and how was your day, and I'm proud of you. Uh, never, never heard those things, and the first time I got that again, it was, it was, a, it was an amazing feeling. Mm -hmm. Well, we are certainly glad that you uh, uh, were the recipient of that that day and you felt encouraged. Um, I know it, today you speak into the lives of, of young athletes, and we'll get into that a little bit more in the second segment. Um, but I am grateful for that person that spoke into your life that day when you were 11 and then uh, the coach there in high school. So uh, after you went through high school then and you went off to the junior college, uh, how was your career there? I felt in, I, I fit in pretty good there. It, it actually seems like, Sonia, all of my coaches were, were, were placed in my life for me. I had Coach English in high school. I had Mike Taylor in college and Ken Sparks at, at uh, Carson Newman. 
And every last one of those guys were like, they were my father figures. You know, I had a dad, but my dad, he, he worked uh, he worked extremely hard. He worked on the railroad. He went to work on Sunday night, and he came back home either Thursday or Friday. Mm -hmm. So my, my football coaches were like my father figures, and I wanted to make them happy. And that was by going out and doing exactly what they asked me to do on the field. I did something for them, and what I got from them was priceless. I... I enjoyed the the pats on the back and uh, the looking at me like I was somebody special. So um, mm -hmm. I, I think that was an even exchange. So I, I, it was, uh, college was tough, don't get me wrong, as far as my learning process. I didn't find out until I was 24 years old and playing professional football that I had attention deficit disorder and dyslexia. And that was my problems with learning when I was coming up. Mm -hmm. So my, my again, my, my coaches in football um, helped me overcome that, uh, for lack of a better word, that embarrassment or that shame of not mm -hmm. being academically up to par uh, with my with my with my schoolwork. But I, I I'm 43 years old now, Sonia, and I every and I understand every part of my life and my struggles. Mm -hmm. And you certainly did have a lot of struggles. Uh, another thing that we're going to get into, touch into here a little bit on the second segment is a book that you are writing right now. And there is a, a wealth of information that is in that book. And you go into to far greater detail about the obstacles and the challenges that you had to overcome as a young man. Um, now, after you went to Carson Newman College, you were actually uh, the second pick in the third round in the 92 draft, correct? Yes. And what was that evening like for you at the draft? Uh, that that evening was unbelievable. I got a I got a call from Jerry Jones probably around six or seven o'clock uh, that night. Uh, I didn't think I was going to get drafted on that first day, but uh, I got a call from Jerry Jones and I answered the phone. Guy asked to speak to Clayton Holmes, and I said, "This is Clayton Holmes," and he said, "How would you like to be a Dallas Cowboy?" <laughs> said, I would love to be a Dallas Cowboy. So I got him on the phone with my agent. Uh, they made the deal. But that moment, Sonia, when my agent called me back, <laughs> first it was scary because he called me back and told me he turned down an offer from the Dallas Cowboys. So it was <laughs> it was a little nerve-wracking for about 30 minutes. And then he called mm -hmm. me back and said, hey, they must have wanted you really bad because they wanted to draft me the next to the last pick in the second round, but they traded it for the second pick in the third round. Mm -hmm. And when he told me that, Sonia, the first thing that came to my mind, um, I, my arms just fell to my side and the tears just started pouring because I started thinking about all the obstacles that I had to overcome to get there. I had my first kid right before my senior year in high school. Um, mm -hmm. I barely had my, my, my 2.0, my grade point average to go play football. So all mm -hmm. of these things... My, my childhood before I moved in with my parents and got out of the trap, out of the hood, all of these things, just this ton of emotions just hit me uh, when I finally achieved that goal of making it to professional football. Mm -hmm. I know in personal conversations uh, you have shared with me that, that at this time um, in your community, it was, it was literally like, which one of us is going to make it out? you know, who's going to, who's going to make it out of the hood, who's actually going to make it out of here, because yes. um, there, there were so many challenges mm -hmm. there uh, in the community, isn't that correct? Yes, yes, and, uh, you know, I, I made it out, and unfortunately, some people can look at a person like myself, a person like uh, Oprah, a person that has gone through some tremendous struggles and made it, but I think if you put that on the scale of 10 people, I think we may be one or maybe even two people out of the 10 that go through the things that we went through and somehow make it out of the trap. And uh, mm -hmm. that's, that's what my goal is, is to help people understand that, yes, this I made it, and that doesn't mean that everybody that goes through what I went through can make it. It's just, it's just extremely tough. So I want to make it easier for the next little Clayton out there that's going through some similar things, and maybe I can come in and, and, and help him avoid some of those um, pitfalls that I went through. That's, that's just how I see things now, Sonia. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, it is how you see things now. You do have a completely different perspective, and, and I know that you are um, such an encourager. I know that you are speaking into the lives of, of many young athletes today, and, and really just um, you're such a positive impact in their lives. Um, we're going to go to a break here in just a moment, Clayton, uh, and then we'll, we'll go ahead and pick up where, where we left off here. So um, hang on with us, folks, until we get back from the break, and uh, we'll talk some more with Clayton Holmes. Six hundred monkeys, West Glen Town Center. Big, small, fluffy, or scaly, pets are a part of our family. They deserve quality care when it comes to keeping them healthy. When caring for your critters, you should only trust Dr. Anderson of Anderson Animal Hospital. The Anderson Animal Hospital offers care for all kinds of pets, from the smallest chinchilla or mouse to the biggest German Shepherd or horse. Whether it's a routine vaccination, toenail trim, or necessary heartworm prevention or surgery, Dr. Anderson offers consistent care for your pet. Call or stop in today. Hey everybody, welcome back from the break. So uh, before we went to the break, we were talking to Clayton Holmes, three-time Super Bowl champion, about the numerous challenges that he uh, had as, as a youth uh, growing up there in um, uh, South Carolina and uh, many of the challenges that he had to overcome. Um, so to transition from where we were, uh, Clayton, we were just talking about you finishing up there in college and I wanted to ask you, when you went to the Dallas Cowboys, uh, what was it like for you? What, what did you experience when you first showed up there at, at camp? It was, it, it was pretty overwhelming. I to fly into Dallas, I go in, I got my contract done immediately. So I go in, I sign my contract, I sign a contract for $1.3 million and I get $220,000 up front. And I'm ecstatic, I'm, I'm, I'm happy about signing this deal, but I kind of set myself up for failure because I had this huge expectation of what I was going to become when I made to professional football, Sonia, I honestly thought that I was going to turn into a man or transform into a man, whatever <laughs> I was thinking mm -hmm. a man was at that time. And what mm -hmm. I was thinking was, uh, you know, I wasn't going to be making all the bad decisions that I made in elementary, high school, college. Uh, I was going to be you know, smart with the money. I just honestly thought that my decision uh, making was going to change. And after about two weeks of being there, it kind of really sunk in. I remember walking out of the mall one day and it hit me. I was like, man, you know, I'm, I'm still the same person. And now the only difference is I just have money now. And that definitely mm -hmm. wasn't good because I definitely did not uh, handle my, my money the right way. So it was a, it was a culture shock for me to, to, to get mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. Well, and it, as a, a very young man, freshly out of college, who, who came from seemingly nothing, um, very little means, uh, now to have the $220,000, like you said, in your hands, and of course, to you, you know, that's, you know, like $25 million. Mm -hmm. um, you were not given a mentor. Of course, that, that wasn't um, the way that things went back in the day. And, uh, and so you kind of wanted to keep up with the Joneses, right? Exactly. Exactly. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say that. I, I don't mean you, coach. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and that was my problem. I was a leader on the field, Sonia, but off the field, I kind of turned into a follower, wanting to fit in, mm -hmm. wanting to be cool. I grew up being this shy, reserved guy, and you know, tried to, to break out of, tried to break out of that, uh, tried to break out of it instead of trying to understand it at that time. So uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I was I was trying to fit in uh, and, and got with the wrong crowd and. Everything happened like it was supposed to happen, I honestly believe, because I've learned so much about myself. 
Right. And I, I think, too, in all fairness, I think that um, you were t um, taken advantage of as well. Um, and, you know, you hear those stories of when, when people, uh, quote unquote, make it, you know, and they come into fame or they, they come into wealth. It seems like everybody and their cousins, mothers, brothers, uncle comes out of the woodwork, huh? <laughs> exactly. And me being the person that I am, you didn't even have to be a relative. If I knew you, you asked me for some money. And if I had it, for some strange reason, I felt bad if I didn't help out. But I lived the horror story that they warned us about, about uh, bad agents, bad investments, and, mm -hmm. and drugs. So I, I wasn't involved in either of those things. I thought I had a really good agent. Well, my agent ends up going to the federal penitentiary. I do get involved in drugs, and I do get involved in bad investments. So it was kind of mm -hmm. in one ear and out the other. So, But fortunately now, I think the NFL has this rookie symposium set up, and it's mandatory. And I think it's for two weeks that all the rookies go to, and they really try to, to educate these guys more because there's going to be more Clayton Holmes and uh, some of these other That's guys right. that come through and, and, and spend their money. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so uh, you had some extreme highs. You had some fantastic victories, of course, and um, uh, some unfortunate circumstances, uh, perhaps some uh, poor choices. And so then afterwards, um, you know, you, you hit some hard times for a while. And uh, I know that a lot of that is going to be into the book, uh, excuse me, written in the book. Mm -hmm. And so we can leave that up to our viewers to pick up the book, uh, excuse me, the book when it comes out this next uh, spring. Mm -hmm. But let's go ahead and fast forward to what you are doing today, Clayton. Okay. How is it that you are, are utilizing um, your gifts, your talents, and your experiences to speak into the life of, um, of the young athletes today? Well, I, I started a, a company a couple years ago called Realize Athletics, where I teach uh, mm -hmm. kids speed and agility. I, I just pass on the information that was passed uh, to me. And there's nothing, no greater feeling when I have a an athlete come in that uh, his running form is off or he thinks he or she can't jump. I, it, it is really inspiring to see that smile on their face, that same smile that I had on my face when I hit that baseball, when they achieved something that they haven't done. So I have my speed and agility business and I'm also working with the United Way. I'm the co-chair this year with the United Way and I love what the United Way stands for. Um, mm -hmm. They have this Thrive by Five um, activity where we really focus on, we're focusing on the youth because, you know, I, we've heard this a thousand times, Sonia, but the, that the youth truly is our answer to making things better. If we give them a fair shot at life and if we respect them, then the chances of them giving that same respect back just increases. And that's the fortunate thing about, <clears throat> excuse me, this path that I've been on. I've seen the whole spectrum of life. I've seen the whole spectrum of families and behaviors. And my conclusion is, you know, most people just aren't given the tools that they need to be productive in society. And that's what I want to help bring some awareness to. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you are doing that indeed. I know in our personal conversations, you've talked about your, your passion of words. And, you know, this is one of my passions as well, is the, the, my passion of words, that people would be cautious and careful and mindful and purposeful about the words that they choose to say. Yes. What they choose to say when they're speaking into, especially into the life of a child. Mm. Those words are powerful. Mm. They can either build up, encourage, uh, or edify, or they can tear down, cause pain, grief, and, and destruction. Uh, and so many times, I think, you know, and even as adults, so many times the words just don't pass through the filter. Yes. They go directly from their head straight out their mouths. Yes. And so much damage can be done. And I know that you are a man that, that is uh, passionate about speaking life and hope and encouragement into this next generation. Yes, you are, you are giving me chills, sister. That, that I couldn't say it better. <laughs> that, that's exactly it. They say sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt. I think that is completely false. Words can hurt, they can impact you, they can get into your subconscious, and whether you know it or not, you can believe that you are dumb or stupid if you're constantly told that you're dumb and stupid. You can believe mm -hmm. that you are a brilliant person, you're gonna do great things if you are continuously told that, and you are praised when you do do good things. Um, 
that deserve that kind of praise. So words are powerful, Sonia. They, they are absolutely powerful, especially to a child that has no idea of why they're doing what they're doing. I think we've all heard our kids and other kids say those famous words. Why'd you do that? I don't know. That's, they, they need us to help them understand some of these things that they do. They, they really do. So, um, yes, word, words are powerful, Sonia. So we really have to be mm-hmm. careful what we're saying to our youth. Mm -hmm. Indeed, we do. And, you know, even as coaches, you you know, I coach in soccer and and you're over there um, doing your agility training for for athletes in all different sports. But even as coaches, you know, I I think so many are still embracing that old school method of telling them they're dumb and they're stupid. And you're, you know, if they're boys, you're you're running like girls. You can't even move. You're slow, you know, and there's there's nothing positive that's going to come out from that. Mm -hmm. We need to be we need to be as 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 coaches and, and people of influence in their lives, we need to be ones that, that are encouraging them. Even when there is a word of correction that needs to come forth, there is a proper way and, and a more effective and productive way to deliver that those words of correction, right? Exactly. I remember my, my coach, he was a mean coach. He was a stern guy. But song, he only he, he yelled at me one time. And it was, uh, it was at halftime, we was losing to a team that only won one game. And he was yelling at everybody, and I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden he caught my eye, and he looked at me, and he said, Clayton, what are you out there doing? You're not playing football. Like, I know you can play football. Mm. And the first thing that came to my mind, Sonia, was like, oh, my gosh. I said, the coach is mad at me. I can't have this. I got to get him back in my good graces. So it made me perform better because I was used to his praises, and when I saw that I was not – playing up to the standards that he knew that I could play at, he got on me in a constructive way. So I went back mm-hmm. out there. Uh, we we got the kickoff, Sonia, and I caught it <laughs> and took it straight to the house for a touchdown. Straight to the <laughs> house. <laughs> so, I could, so I could get back and, into his good graces. So that's why I think also um, letting a child know that you're disappointed in a behavior that they've done when you've been showing them a, a lot. Uh, I think that will hurt a child more than anything when you show them that you are hurt and you don't have right. to physically hurt them. You just show them that you're disappointed after you've been showing them a lot of love. I think that's uh, better than any kind of whipping or beating or anything that I, I used to go through when I was little. It is, absolutely. Yes. You know, Clayton, we only have a few seconds left, and, and I just want to let our viewers know Clayton Holmes is available for speaking engagements. And if you'd like to contact him and book him to come and speak to your youth, you can go to ClaytonHolmes.org. Clayton, thank you so much for joining us here on the Solmanad Show with Sonia. I look forward to having you back on again, okay? Well, thank you, and that's ClaytonHolmesFoundation.org. All right. Thank you so much, Clayton. Thank you. We had a great interview with Clayton Holmes. You'll have to be sure to check out the book when it comes out at the end of the spring. So stay tuned uh, here at the Solmanad Show with Sonia because next week we have personal trainer Marge Jones with Kosama Gyms right here. You be blessed in whatever you put your hands to do. Until next week, ciao. Wardrobe provided by The Hall Tree. Plants and flowers provided by Gertz House Gallery. Set provided and staged by Interiors by Andrea. Hair provided by Michelle Mayola. Fitness and training services provided by Kosama.